Hello, uh, welcome again. We have a small issue here on Clubhouse. We are back. To recap today, we're going to be doing an audio recording of a presentation we are just about to have to learn how to upgrade, how you can upgrade your business operations with a simple framework in Asana. So if you want to get the recording, the actual recording with the presentation, plus the resources that we're going to be providing in this recording, go ahead and visit our Facebook group that is in the pin link in this room. So without further ado, I'm going to get started. And if you have questions, just raise your hand or send me a DM here on Clubhouse and I will be happy to respond to them. So welcome to upgrade your business operations with a simple framework in Asana. My name is Barbara Ramirez. Today you're going to learn the simple strategy that will help you set up your business operations ready to scale. Welcome again. My name is Barbara Ramirez. I am a Latina. I got my business management degree and later on an MBA. And in 2015, to give you a brief short story of mine, I gave a turn in my life. I quit my corporate work in Venezuela. I quit my job and I decided to look for alternatives that will help me work remote from home. This is back in 2015 when this wasn't like so uh, cool or it wasn't like something people used to do working from home, online, remotely, and also implementing planning and work organization system. That is what I used to do. My goal ever since has been to help business owners and their teams to work aligned towards the achievements of the objectives with intentional planning. I am Venezuelan. I live abroad for five years. And now I'm back here to Venezuela, which I really love and I'm enjoying. This is a beautiful country. And if you ever get to travel to Venezuela, here you have a tourist guide. So I want to know where you are listening, where you're watching. Share with us. Let me know. I like I have worked with people from almost all over the world. And I know I want to know where you're listening and where you're watching us. I created this presentation to help you build a system that supports your life and your business. I know I'm going to talk a lot about business and work, but this will also be useful for your life, for the personal aspects of your life, without doing the most. So get your brain ready, silence your phone, grab your notebook, and grab water, coffee, whatever you prefer to drink. I've been preparing for this for years now. Like this is the exact moment that I feel that is good for me to share this with you so that you know exactly what you need to get more done doing a lot less. So basically, like as you see here, I have spent my whole life searching for the impossible, never imagining that I will become the impossible. It's not that I'm the impossible, but I really love what I have created for my clients. And I want you to learn from this too and apply it to your work, to your life, and to your business. You're going to be coach. We're going to help you shift your mindset about managing your operations. You will receive actionable tips and you will learn exactly how my team and I can help you create seamless system from the same simple system that I will show you today. So here's the agenda. Three takeaways that you're going to take from here. You're going to learn what your business operation needs in order to onboard your clients with this. You're going to learn how to streamline your communications with your team using Asana. And you're going to learn the key to a successful adoption and onboarding process and managing the daily workload operations. A few housekeeping rules for those that, I, that are watching and for those that are also listening. This is a place where you will actually learn. And the main goal for us is to live with an overall idea for you of how to best implement Asana for your life and your business. Ask us questions, 
all the participants, everyone that is watching and that is listening to the recording will be mute when we start. But please use the chat to ask your questions, raise your hands, and I will try to answer them at the end of the presentation. And if I cannot answer them, you will probably receive the answers on my emails and also in our Facebook group that you're going to have access. You can have it uh, in the pin links of this chat. Tag me on Instagram. We have a brand new account that is called Ad Work Better with Asana. It's, it was made with the sole purpose to present to you with all the resources that we have created around Asana and around processes. And you're going to also be learning from our use cases and case studies from our past clients. So I want to ask you, do you know why businesses fail? Or what, they or what they feel that they fail. The main reason is that they don't create a system that supports the backend operations in a seamless way to generate revenue. So that's why our vision for you is to see your business grow with ease. And that begins with solidifying your system so that you have time to actually run your business. That's it. Isn't it funny how you've been told that you don't need to focus in the backend operations of your business until you hit certain level of revenue? Like we have worked with companies that they will have consultants or coaches that they will tell them, no, you don't need to do this until you hit six figures or until you hit this revenue for the year. And that is wrong. Like, that is actually the number one reason why business fails, because they lack of systems. So the truth is that running business operations means having a seamless workflow that helps you work better. And the way business owners confuse this with micromanagement is why we want to teach you to create a work management system that helps you Shift that mindset and start seeing better results in your team and therefore in your revenue. So I want us to have an honest conversation and this feel this as an intervention from us to you. Because I have seen people overcomplicate the setup around their operation and it has caused a ton of confusion. So let's talk about this. Because Due to the lack of clarity around a business operations, people are stuck month over month over month. So I want you to take a few seconds and let me know if you can say confidently yes to the, to the following three. Can you capture your teamwork using projects correctly? Can you know, how, do you know how to organize and track your work in the right way with the right use of my task and inbox in whatever tool you use. I'm not just talking about Asana right now. And can you communicate effectively with your team members every step of the way? Can you say yes to the three of them or at least two out of three? If you can say effectively that you can do those three things or at least two out of three then yes you can have a system without having a secondary to-do list managing hundreds of internal emails having a scattered resources feeling always out of date lacking the fact that you have to report your team and finding hard to communicate so if you can say yes to at least two out of three, that you can capture your teamwork using projects correctly, that you can organize and track your own work with the right use of my task and inbox, and that you can effectively communicate with your team members every step of the way, then you can have a system. And if you don't have it, now is the time to do it. So here's the thing. It is not that complicated. It is actually quite simple. It only requires a work management system. 
And again, I'm going to introduce you about Asana. As you can see it here, this is Asana's logo, but we are not talking about Asana here. We are first going to define what do we mean about work management system. Now, I'm going to show you the results of three different business operations and unveil our, our unique approach to business management that, I, that has helped them work better with ease without doing the most. And you're going to hear me say this a lot. You're going to hear me say that we don't want you to do the most, we want you to do less and have more time for yourselves. So it's very important for us that you do less in your business. So let's, let's go. Let's talk about this. Let's talk about the truth about how a business should operate, how you should be operating. So three key aspects, capture, organize, and track. You need to have a way that you can capture your work by recording the work that needs to get done from you or others. You need to organize your work by planning and prioritizing your work in advance of executing it. And you need to track your work by doing the work and communicating with your team members and clients along the way. Because when your operations are out of alignment, it will be unclear for everyone to prioritize the work. The business can lose potential ideal clients. You waste a ton of time building a system that doesn't serve you short or long term. And most likely, you will feel that you need to be always in a uh, available, always mode on for all your team members, and you will feel that they need to be in that way too. So here's the thing. Sometimes I will walk into some company's operations and they will feel something like this, like a desktop with a mess of papers all over the place, like post-its and notes and notebooks and everything's gathered around and they will not know what's a priority, what they need to do. They will not have clarity on any of that. But instead of trying to create a simple process with a seamless workflow, they are focused on things like the, specific, the specifics of the time spent by their team, the micro details of the daily task, sending messages via Slack or WhatsApp for everything at any time, expecting immediate responses having daily meetings without a clear purpose and changing priorities on a daily basis. So instead of trying to create a simple process to work better, they're just focused on the wrong things. So we have built a lot of companies and team processes and workflows as OBMs, online business managers and Asana experts, super complicated like, for example, e-commerce businesses, with more than 20 or 100 employees, thousands of clients, overload with work, delay orders, delivery, and no, clar no clarity on their priorities. We have created four complex uh, companies and businesses such as coaches. We think they, they will have simple processes, but they don't. It's very complex for coaches, for educators, for consultants, because they will have freelancers. They will have high paying clients expecting a high service. They will have group coaching programs that right now, most likely they're unattended and they will not have a clear messaging on their platform, on their content. And also with agencies like digital agencies, marketing agencies, marketing teams, for the studios, they also have at the beginning super complex processes like focusing the wrong things. Mainly they will have multiple team members and project managers that they will have no idea what to do, when to deliver. So they will have client asking constantly for feedback and status of their work, no clarity on their priorities, like very complicated to keep that and to scale. 
All of them are different industries, but we have worked with them with the same approach, clarity. Clarity in their communication, clarity in their energy, how they feel, and clarity in their organization, in their operations. So if you don't communicate well with your team members internally, with your clients externally, with your vendors or contractors externally, most likely something is going to fall apart. If you don't know how you feel when you're doing something, when you're setting goals, when you're working with your team members, when you're delivering the service and experience to your clients, most likely something is going to fall. And if you don't know how you should be organizing your operations, how everything should be running, most likely something is going to fall. And because you will be always evolving, and so your processes, so your business. Today you are in one place, you start making commitments, you try to plan and keep track, doing follow up with your goals. You should be celebrating every small victory. Uh, and I say small uh, in a way, like everything you achieve is a victory, it's a milestone that you accomplish. Then you, tr you should be making new plans to continue growing because your vision will be always evolving. That's how, that's like the ideal state of how you should be feeling when you're jumping into your work or into your business. But instead, you don't feel in this way. So how do you get clarity in order to feel in that way that you are evolving and that your business is growing and in a way you can scale to incorporate other areas to your business with processes? As simple as that. Without processes in place, you're not going to have clarity for your business and for where you're going and how to scale. So at Work Better with Asana, which is our signature program, we have worked with thousands of business operations for the past eight years with their processes and workflows that we have built until now. The ones that operate at the most efficient levels for teams were the ones that allow all team members to provide a seamless communication. Yes, the best systems were actually the ones that were using the right features and automations to help team members to be self-managing. Because their work was flowing towards the achievement of the business goals with clarity. Like it was, it feels so easy. So when we talk about clarity in your energy, it's not just for you, it's also for your team members. So that at some point they became self-managed. So this is something that we didn't invent. We are not reinventing the wheel. Uh, this is not a theory of us. There's, there's plenty of research and documentation on this for like ever since the, the industrial era. So it's basic, it basically goes to you have to write what you do and then do what you write. Again, you have to write what you do and you have to do then what you write. When you are doing that, you are going to identify areas of improvement. You're going to find your operational gaps and then you're going to be able to implement potential automation. But it all starts by writing what you do and do what you write. You can write it out, you can record videos, like the tools to do it, there are a lot of tools that you can do, but it, it's basically about documenting everything that you do. If it's not documented, it's not something that's going to be happening. So we have designed this approach to help you stop doing the most, as we have said already a lot, and let your core system do the work for you. It is a simple system that can help you onboard new team members without stress, have better communications, both internal and external, 
have a complete organization in the entire work without having to micromanage, work 20 hours or less a week on deep work, and I have tested this for the past two or three years and it works. And in a way, you can decide to start taking more days off because now you will know what will happen and nothing will break apart from your work. All of this is designed around your goals and core processes. So I want you to imagine that today is November or December at the end of the year. And we're very close to that day, honestly, it's in just a couple of months. And you already have your next year outline and you're able to decide which days to take off and actually take them without feeling stressed about it. So let's go back to that. Let's say that today is November or December, whatever month you choose to plan your year. And you already like you have your plan for the next year and you know what are the months or the weeks or days that you are taking off. Like try to try to envision that, try to imagine it. How would you feel about that? How would you feel about the fact that when you are doing your yearly planning for the next year, whatever month it is, it could be November or December, November it will be ideal, and then you will say, yes, I'm going to take three months off in this particular month, and then I will take another two weeks off in this other month, and I'm going to take this weekend off. Like, you can say and decide to do that without feeling stressed about it because you know that nothing will fall apart. So basically our system is the definition of work smarter and not harder. We will teach, we, like right now, we teach our clients to create a simple way of work with Asana that they can use year after year and be able to decide that, be able to know and not just for the business owner and the managers, like for the entire company, that you have already your plan for the days off for the coming year. And again, not just for you as a business owner, also for you if you work for a company. Because we are defined by the, ask, the questions we ask ourselves, and we told you we're going to be coaching you, you are being coached right now. I want you to start asking the right questions whenever you're going to do anything in your business or in your work. I want you to ask yourself the right questions. So the next one, and this is how we kick off with any clients. I want you to ask yourself right now, today, if you leave your business or work today and you're not able to come back what will break? I will question, right? Yes, I want you to think about, I want you to reflect on this question. And if you feel that you need to stop right now, pause and reflect on the question. Journal about it, talk about it, discuss it with, with your spouse, with your partners, with your team members with your managers, with your coach. Stop right now and ask yourself this question and think about it. If you leave your business or work today and you're not able to come back for whatever reason, you have to suddenly take a month off for whatever reason, or you have to take two days off or a week or a year for whatever reason, you have to leave today and you're not able to come back, what will break? What will fall apart if you cannot come back to do the work that you're doing? And this goes beyond of saying that everything is documented. It's more than that. It's not just having everything documented. So I want you to reflect very good on this question. That is what will bring you clarity for your operations and what you actually need in your business, in your work, and in your life. 
Like you can basically apply that question to everything, every aspect in your life. So let's go back to that one. If you leave your business or work today and you're not able to come back, what will break? What will fall apart? You start gaining clarity with processes. We're seeing right now an example of a, a process documentation that we created for one of our first clients. This was years ago, 2018 or something. And that's how they start gaining clarity with processes and not just having them documented. It goes beyond that. Because when your processes are properly documented, you can choose to take three weeks off, a three day weekend, and your business will still be running with ease. Yeah, I don't know. I know that you also want that. An SOP, which is a standard operating procedure, will help you document and communicate a process. It's important that you also create certain rules in your business before you start creating your SOPs, which are your standard operating procedures. So again, you gain clarity with processes, but it's not just that. You can have everything documented, but if you don't have a system in place for those processes, probably something will fall apart if you cannot come back to work today or for a year, for whatever reason. So both has to go into alignment. Having your processes properly documented and a system in place for those processes. That's the key that is going to help you make sure nothing falls apart. So if we have a rule of three for this. Once you have your standard operating procedures documented and communicated through your processes, first, you have to set up systems for the three key areas of your business. And I will say it again, three key areas of your business. You may have more, but these three are going to be your pillars for your business. And again, this is not something we are not invented. This already exists. We study this at business school. Uh, if, if you have studied business management and you know all the uh, history about how business management theories were created, these are the three pillars. Having a system for your client experience, and this applies for any kind of business. It can apply for an e-commerce business. It can apply for a service provider business. It can apply for educational business. It can apply for manufacturing. So everyone will have a client or a customer. And you have to have a system for that experience, for their experience, for your clients or customers' experience. You have to have a system for your team building to see your team grow at all levels. And lastly, the third pillar is to have a system for your business development. The three are key and are your pillars in order for you to scale. The second rule is to learn the difference between a process and a how-to. So notice how we, we talk about core processes, core system, because those are going to be the foundations of what you're going to be operate, how you're going to be operating. I don't want you to focus right now and, and mostly at, at this era that we have the information just by our hands, in our phones, or in our computers. If it's something that you can literally Google in any website, that is not a process. That is just a how-to or that is just a guide that you can search for. And everyone at their role, whatever role you have, should be able to do so. You have to provide the tools for them to do that, but focus on documenting your core processes, the ones that are for you specifically for your business, not the how-tos. 
because you are going to be wasting so much valuable time and energy doing that. The third rule, make sure to have a centralized place to host your documentation with your team. And if you go beyond that, you can also do it with your clients. At some point, you can have a knowledge base that you share with your clients as well. And that will set you apart from your competitors like you have no idea. So going back, this is how you document your processes, for example, in a tool like Asana. Very simple, try to focus on your core processes and document your core processes, not the how-tos, not the guys. You can provide your team members with a tool to know where to find the guys, to know where to find the how-tos, but your core processes are your own. Like no other company will have a process exactly like, like yours. It could be similar, but it will never be exactly like your core processes. And again, we focus on Asana, but you can do this like basically with whatever tool you prefer. You can do it with Google Docs, you can do it with a Google Sites, you can use Airtable, you can use Asana, you can use spreadsheets, whatever, whatever tool you prefer, but you have to have a centralized place to host that knowledge. So here's the strategy. Take a picture, take a screenshot, uh, write it down, print it, have it in a place that you can always see it. Uh, for those of you that are listening, I'm going to present to you our strategy that we apply for our clients. Five steps. You can basically, basically count it with your hands. Number one, audit your business operations and map your current state. Like basically take a picture of your business as of today. Then number two, identify areas of improvements and map your ideal state. So visualize how you see after you identify areas of improvements and operational gaps, how will be the ideal state of your business, how you envision that it will be the utopia for your business operations. Number three, start documenting the core processes based on that ideal state. Design, map out, workflows, templates, every tool you need, like create that ideal state and document it. Number four, implement the workflows and necessary integrations that you will need. That's the first step. Notice how start implementing is almost at the end. And the last one, you have to provide onboarding and training to your team and have constant support for this change process to your team members. It's very important that you provide support for them. We talk about the three pillars that we have for your system. Uh, we're going to explain more how that looks like. So if you are going to create a system for your client experience, that could look like to designing uh, your unique onboarding process that will show your team and your clients how it's like working with you. What are the tools that you're going to be using to communicate? How you're going to deliver their, uh, their ser your services or your products to them? How you're going to be expecting communication from them? That's, your, that's a process that should be part of your client experience. The same applies for client of boarding, how you're going to afford them, how you provide support after your service or after you deliver your products. So all of that is very important. So those are going to be the process that are going to help you create your client experience system. For team building, that could look like for your unique higher onboarding process, how you're going to hire new team members and how you're going to onboard them. And it's unique to you. I have seen companies and every company has their unique onboarding process. Like some of them could be similar, 
but each company has their own. It could look also having a professional development process, how you're going to provide training to them, how you're going to provide with the tools they need to be their best at their work, how you're going to provide companionship in your, with your team members, collaborations. So all of that is part of a professional development process. And again, it's unique to you. So I want you on these two, client experience and team building, I don't want you to wait until you have to hire someone for your team members or that you have a new client to design your processes. Like you need to have it now, very clear from the beginning, if you are just starting. Last one, but not less important, the three of them are really important, is your business development system. That is the third one, we, the third pillar we talk. So this could look like having a sales process in place, a content process in place, a communication process in place. When you have all of this set up in the right way, you will realize you don't need to be always on at all times. You don't need to be in meetings every day to follow with project estimations, project updates, solving issues. And I'm not going to talk about solving issues today. I may talk about something in a few seconds, but this is like a conversation for another time. So, but you may be asking, okay, but why Asana? What does Asana has to do with all of this? So Asana, if you don't know what Asana is, it's a task and work management tool. I really like that concept, work management tool, that allows us to be clear about our own work and our teams. In a very simple way, we know what we have to do every day. We know who is responsible. We know how we should do it. And we know when to deliver and communicate. Very simple. Like if you're not tech savvy, you are, as soon as you log into Asana, you will know exactly what you need to do. And Asana fits with other tools, which is, comes very handy and is actually really great that you have Asana as your central a workspace for everything and then you can connect it with other tools for your file management for your communication and messaging it's good as long as it as long as it is in alignment with your with the processes that you identify so you need to do the integration that are that are aligned with your with your business and with your operations Try to stop comparing yourself, and, and in this part, in terms of integrations, try not to compare yourself with other companies just because it's cool or just because someone else is also using that tool. You may not need it. So notice how we talk about the implementation and the integrations is the fourth step of our strategy is because you don't need to think about that right now. You need to think about how your process is, how your unique process will look like, and then is where you're going to identify what are going to be the tools that you actually need to integrate with Asana. With Asana, you can use tasks to track the work, to collaborate with team members and also with clients if you choose to bring your clients into Asana and organize basically all your work. The task can be to-dos, ideas, notes, or reminders. You can assign a task to yourself or to a team member, a due date, uh, deadlines, that, so that is very clear. And now you have, a, like, basically Asana has launched more features into Visibility in terms of dates, which is great. You can add instructions and expectations in the task description field. You can type a, and basically tag a, and link other tasks, people, conversations, projects. When to mention, when you're tagging someone, you can basically mention them in Asana. So they will be added as followers and collaborators in the task. You can add comments to ask questions or give updates on the task. 
create subtasks to break your tasks into smaller steps. You can communicate and coordinate faster with your inbox. So I really, this is one of the features that I actually love the most about Asana, the inbox, because it helps you when you use it in the right way, it helps you eliminate so much internal emails when you have all your team members in Asana. And if, if you are a service provider, and I will say this, this will, this will apply better for service providers, and it may not apply so good for e-commerce business or manufacturers because it's more complicated. So there are better tools for that, such as Sandesk or any other similar. So what I'm going to say, apply best for service providers, for coaches, for educators. So if you bring your clients into Asana, you basically eliminate so much internal and external emails. You will have all your communications completely organized inside one simple tool. You can check your inbox to quickly read and respond to your latest updates. Open and respond to updates without leaving the inbox. Like basically everything lives in there. You can always, obviously similar to an email, you can archive them when you're ready to dismiss them. But a difference to an email when we delete them and we forget that we delete an email and now we cannot take it back. In Asana is different. We archive them and we can always go back to the archive and take back uh, that information. Because it's cloud-based, so it doesn't take any space. We will always have it. You can choose when to follow tasks or projects so you stop receiving those notifications if they no longer fit for you. And when you're ready, you can turn Asana's emails notifications off, which I do it like from day one for all the clients. So they, they start using more the inbox inside Asana. The projects will help you track and organize the steps in a process or initiatives. You can add tasks to projects from emails, which comes very handy when you keep receiving external emails. You can easily with the Asana add-on or with the email uh, integration to forward emails to Asana and create tasks. It comes very handy. You can add your task to other related projects. So there's a feature that allows us to multi-home tasks and we eliminate having duplicates of tasks unnecessarily. You can add sections to organize your task in a list project or in a board view, kind of a Kanban board. You, in that way, they are called columns and it will help you organize your task in a very nice board, assign your task and set due dates, add everyone that you need that who needs to stay updated on your projects you can add them as members and if you use correctly like all the features of the projects you can brief them in the overview with a uh, more details on the projects the roles of all the team members like it's very very well created you can post conversations to make announcements or start discussions and this one comes very handy and when i said a few slides ago about the integrations and the fact that most companies and agencies and coaches right now they are like oh i need to use slack because everyone everyone else is using slack maybe you don't maybe what you need is to continue having it in asana once you identify why why you feel that you need to have this tool when instead what you need is a communication process very clear and now you can just easily do it with the messages feature of the project we have done it for our clients and the change has been like they feel less anxious because having more communication tools creates anxiety and just the fact that we change from slack to using asana messages inside the project has decreased their anxiety a lot and you will always always know what to do next in my task like it's very clear as soon as you open asana you have your task list for the day you know what to do again you can forward emails to your asana to create new tasks if you need it 
they will appear on top of all your tasks, which comes really useful, and you can organize it, prioritize it the best way that, that you work. Basically, you can create tasks, project messages, and teams, and invite team members from anywhere in Asana, from the top bar, as in, if you are seeing the presentation, in the icon that allows you to create tasks, project, and messages. Some quick tips that I always share you can, and things that you can do with Asana that will help you work better with this tool. First, you can easily organize your daily tasks, like your to-do list, your tasks, uh, like I want to see how many tasks I completed in a specific time. You can filter that. You can see your tasks by project. If you are managing multiple projects and maybe you want to prioritize them, if you manage multiple clients, you can have something in place that allows you to know what are the tasks you have per client and any upcoming tasks for the next week so that you can organize yourself better. Additional to the technical areas and aspects of Asana, something that you need to incorporate is to set up some rules and work routines that those are the ones that are actually going to help you work better with Asana. So for example, you can choose to every day, the night before, or early in the morning, whatever works best for you, review your Asana and make sure you have your to-do list for the next day already defined. Every time you finish a task, mark it as complete and use the comment sections and attachments if necessary so that you can follow up with everything. But remember that always make sure to, when you finish your task, complete them. Like checking off the tasks, apart from the fact that Asana gives us some unicorns and celebrations when we do it, there's research behind that, that when we check off things from our to-do list, we feel certain level of accomplishments. So you have to mark your task as completed. It's going to help you increase your energy levels and then you can you feel the need to go to the next one and complete the following one and so on. So it's a routine you need to incorporate if you don't have it in place. And if you work with team members in Asana and you have them onboard them into Asana, just bring them here and then try to incorporate a routine to inform them in your progress. Don't expect them, don't expect for them to ask you, like, how are you doing with this? How are you progressing with this? Take a like take take the lead and provide the status updates before they ask you. So here's how to get your business and your work and your life operations streamlined with Asana. You have to review your content and we have talked about this in a few slides before. We just want to refresh it for you. You have to review your content state, your current state, with an audit of your current operations. So if you don't know how to do this, just let us know. We will try to provide a guide in our Facebook channel for this in the following days. Next, you have to find your operational gaps and areas of improvements. Create your unique ideal state. And then, after you have all of this identified, is when you're going to start building your new way of work with Asana. You're going to start from the end. You're going to start and go to Asana and create projects just because there's a template for that. That will cause stress, that will cause waste of time, and it will drain your energy. You have to start from the beginning, not from the end. And creating the projects in Asana, creating the tasks and the workflows, that's the last step. You need to first, and let's refresh on this, you need to first review your current state with an audit of your current operations. Next, find your operational gaps and areas of improvement and create your unique ideal state. Once you have this identified, is when you can go in Asana and build your new way of work, not before. So if you have a few more minutes, we want to now present to you why we're teaching all of this to you, because we want to 
guide you every step of the way inside Work Better with Asana, which is our signature operations and Asana group program that helps business owners and team teams create seamless operations and workflows in order to work with ease. Because we know that streamlining your operations is not easy, it's something that takes time and requires a lot of energy and something that we have learned and I'm going to jump right now into talking on the way that we work uh, in alignment. We are the kind of people that we're going to take everything that is in your brain in the quickest way possible, identify your current operations, identify your operational gaps and areas of improvement, and work with you to create your unique ideal state because this is our area of expertise. This is something that we can, basic, we can do it basically, as we say, with our eyes closed. And because you need to stay in your zone of genius, you need to stay in your area of expertise in what you are best, and you need to also preserve your energy. Doing this takes time, requires tons of energy and tons of research because you also have to do research when you're doing all of this so today we want to present to you officially we're better with asana because we want to help you create all of this we will not only do it for you we will do it with you we want to help you streamline your operations with asana and let's go back to the to one of the first questions when at the beginning of this when we ask you if you know why business fail well business fail because they don't create a system that support the backend operations in a seamless way to generate revenue so we are going to we want to guide you step by step with check-in and feedback opportunities along the way. This is what we do at Work Better with Asana. This is what we do with our VIP clients. And we want to bring you into this because if you are seeing this presentation, if you are listening to this, this is something you need. And if you have thought of the on the answer of the questions we have asked along this presentation and you have identified you need help, we want to do this with you. We want to guide you step by step. We want, we want you to be part of our check-in, weekly check-ins and feedback opportunities. We provide feedback on anything that you implement. Because it's not about the specific step you want to automate. This is something that I notice from most clients. Oh, I just want to create an automation that helps me do X, Y, Z. And when we jump into that and we find why the why they want to do that, we identify that they're just focused on the wrong thing. They haven't figured out yet what's their, their core process and they don't have it documented. So how can you say you want to automate something if you haven't defined a process for what you're going to do? So it's about taking a step back and see your whole business workflow first before doing any automation, before doing any integration. So here's the breakdown, breakdown of what we have at Wordware with Asana right now that we know we have tested and we know it will allow, allow us to provide this for you. That is a long process, but we have break it down to do it together. So we work with eight weekly sessions to streamline your business. They are an hour and a half, so 90 minutes. It's a one-on-one -on -one weekly session for the group with one private strategic planning session for your next two quarters. This is a private session, so it's individual and it will be about four hours. And the reason why we include a strategic planning for the next two quarters is because whatever process you implement, whatever uh, operation that you streamline, 
it needs to be in alignment with your goals, with your vision for your business and for your work. If it's not in alignment, you're going to keep having the same issue month after, after month. We also have two life coaching programs for business operations, an hour each. So it's basically one every month for the following for the eight weeks, which is two months. Where we're, it's kind of a workshop, we're going to be more technical with uh, new updates in regards to Asana or any other operation tool that you can implement based on what we know about your business. And you're going to have a private Telegram channel to get weekly updates on Asana and business operation management. A bit more, we call it like bite-sized uh, tips and hacks that we can share. And as a bonus, we are going to have lifetime access to our Asana course, which is a self-paced course that we update every six months with new updates in regards to Asana. So notice how we focus on help you streamline your business operations with eight weekly sessions, with one private strategic planning session. Both of them, the two firsts are individuals, you're going to have a community with a live group calls, two live calls, workshops, and with a Telegram channel to receive more bite sites, tips and hacks, and our Asana course access, where you're going to have everything you need to learn how to use Asana. Like the technical aspects, you're going to have them in the Asana course. So who is inside work better with Asana? We have business owners, coaches, e-commerce companies, accountants, lawyers, agency owners, marketing teams, copywriters, funnel builders, online business managers, um, virtual assistants, photographers, course creators, and more. They just like the space was so short, but we have worked with multiple industries with our unique approach. And this is what they say, like, they love what they what we do they feel they work better they feel more energized uh this was some some very recent they felt that they needed to cry because it was so beautiful how we capture everything that they actually needed in asana in in the simple way possible When we provide the workshops, we also try to make sure you understand clearly everything in our workshops, in our calls, in the onboarding sessions for your team members, in the materials we provide for you and your team members. We make sure that it's in a way that is digestible, that they go into the onboarding and they know exactly and they understand precisely what they need to do. So this is what our clients say. And just because you are here, we have a special offer that we know you're going to love because besides of being something that requires a lot of time and energy that comes with a cost, that comes with a larger investment. But today we want to let you know that we have a special offer just for you that you're signing up for this presentation. And we're bringing this for you in Work Better with Asana for $2,000, sorry, <laughs> I get confused. So for $2,000 or for payments of $500, we're going to have, a, and this is new, we're going to have a start date on June.